Me and Daly are here in front of the veterinarian clinic here in the Fa area of Tahiti. And uh, one of the things that he needs to fly out of Tahiti is to get a veterinary health certificate within two days. So I'm pretty sure the U.S. probably doesn't care and is happy with the APHIS certificates that he got uh, less than three months ago in uh, May. But uh, the French Polynesians, to, just, to, just to get on the plane in Tahiti, you need to get a veterinary health certificate from a local vet uh, within 48 hours of your flight to leave the country. The vet explained that the airline requires the, the vet certificate and that's the reasoning that the airline does not want to have a sick pet on the plane. Uh, it's, we got the certificate that was super easy and the vet was super nice and we are ready to go and we've got the whole day ahead of us we still got uh, two days and one night until the flight and we are ready to go this is the certificate you need to uh, get the dog into the country and that's a long process whether you're flying in or you're taking him off the boat you need this permit the cab ride to the eco car was uh, 7,500 French Polynesian francs so about $70 which when you think about the length of the cab ride is a pretty good deal uh, it was over an hour to get there. We were lucky we didn't have traffic. If there's a lot of traffic, it's gonna be like an hour and a half. So Taravaro is a pretty far away place. And so for the next two days until I uh, fly out, I rented a car just to make it easier to get to the airport. I was pretty nervous that the cab would show up at all, uh, given how far out uh, Taravaro is. Taravaro is a big town but it's just a long ways from Papiete. All right, I'm here in Tayana. Because I rented the car, uh, Tayana is on the way back to Taravaro, where the boat is hauled out at. You know, next season, I would like to stop at the fuel dock here, which I think is the only fuel dock that is reliably open uh, in Tahiti and maybe all of French Polynesia that you can easily dock next to and that would be awesome to fill up all our diesel needs without carrying lots of jerry cans back and forth or renting a car uh, so hopefully next season I'll stop by here and we'll have a quick stop to fill up all our diesel needs before we make our big jump to the Northern Society Islands and onwards towards Tonga. The fuel dock closes at uh, about 4.30 every day. Uh, they might have reduced hours on Sunday, but supposedly they are open on Sunday mornings. Between 12 and 1, they'll be closed like uh, many other places in French Polynesia that close uh, for lunch. So if you get here fairly early in the day, uh, don't expect to be able to dock around noon and between noon and one and you don't want to get here too late you don't want to get here after four uh, it might be closed me and Daly took the occasion of having the rental car to drive down to Tiapu Beach here's the big wave where they have the big surf competitions There are water taxis about everywhere and they will take you out to the wave and if you have a board you could even try it but I would not recommend that unless you're an experienced surfer. There were some really excellent surfers that we saw 
doing some great trick moves, getting underneath the curl of the wave and jumping over it and all kinds of other wonderful stuff. So the taxi for a half hour cost us about uh, 2,000 CFP or about $20 US. That was for a 30 minute show. The wave uh, that everybody wants to surf here is fairly far out, uh, so it'd be pretty long paddle from the shore. And I think most people take some alternate means of transportation. I saw one couple uh, who took their kayak out there. So getting to Tiapu is really easy. Uh, you take the road until it ends. It is the, the road on the west coast of Tahiti Iti, the small part of the island and it will stop and to get the kind of best view of the big wave you want to take the footpath across the bridge to uh, see that part of the beach. Uh, the sea around Tiapu is a no anchoring boat, no sailboat zone so you definitely cannot visit it via your dinghy or anchoring nearby you need to take a bus down here, take a car, and then uh, walk to the beach. The good thing about catching the bus to Tiapu is that the Tiapu is on the front of the bus. So because it's the end of the line, it's really easy to know which bus is going to Tiapu. It's the one that says Tiapu. So I'm here on August 1st, but the surf competition doesn't start at the trial stage until August the 5th. And on August 11th, the competition really begins. The surf competition is uh, typically in the latter half of August. Okay, today I'm just trying to empty all the water tanks before I leave so we don't have kind of festering water in the lines and so uh, we'll refill water when we get back next year. The big problem that I've had this season is that the auxiliary tank is not really pumped and I was not successful in pumping I just ended up draining it completely out by pulling out the hoses and taking it out. I think I need a lift pump or need a different setup for the bladder tank. It just really doesn't like the pump. Uh, and I similarly need some type of lift pump in addition to the, the uh, pressure pump in the engine compartment to keep the lines full of water because the lines tend to run out of water when uh, the tank is, say, less than half full and then we lose water pressure that way. Now, we, we do have a hand pump but that hand pump is the only thing that works and it's nice to have the pressure water and we also been running the uh, filter through that. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, I've already kind of halfway installed a lift pump which I'm using to just pump all the water out of the tank, uh, the big tank, the 70 gallon tank into the bilge. And that's been pumping in the bilge for about uh, 40 minutes now and it's still pumping well. I thought I only had about 40 gallons or less than that, but it seems to be still working. So uh, it's supposed to be a gallon per minute and so should have dumped about 40 gallons in the bilge already. And the bilge pump is uh, of course pumping that out into the parking lot where we're uh, the boat is staying. So this is where the tank used to be and it's not there anymore. This is the auxiliary bladder. So I'm putting the 
jerry cans underneath the dinghies because they don't do well in sunshine and they they degrade in sunshine so the less they're out of the sunshine the better and so under the dinghies it's dark and they uh, will last a lot longer that way. completely full the bladder tanks all dried out and i'm gonna put it back in and uh It'll be ready for next time. I think uh, I'm not going to be able to get it working reliably unless I have a lift pump, and I don't. I need to buy one, and I don't have one right now. So I'll install the lift pump uh, next time, or I won't fill it. So for some reason, the fresh water pump is not pulling it out enough, and uh, whenever we switch to the fresh water pump for this tank, it just sucks air so it needs that extra pump to get into the, the main fresh water pump and that will push it throughout the system All right, we're going to drive to the airport. It's about an hour. Uh, I think we're still on pretty good schedule. It's almost 8, and the flight leaves at a little before midnight. Uh, but uh, And we turn in the car at 10, so my plan's to check the bag and then turn in the car. So that's the end of our Season 2 of Slow Boat Sailing. It was a long time coming. We had a long break between the episodes. It basically stretched from December 2016 through August 2017. Definitely the longest se season of sailing and the most miles in any one season. Subscribe to the Slow Boat Sailing channel where we give you the stories of the most interesting sailors in the world. This episode is dedicated to Daly, uh, who left us a few months after it was filmed. What a great dog. Bye-bye.